Okay, so let's take a quick look at this one, the effect of emotion management on nurses' job performance during pandemic COVID-19. So one of the things you'll notice is that unlike the other one we just looked at, this one has that structured abstract that I was telling you about. So they've got a background section, a method section, a results section, a conclusion section, and a recommendation section right in their abstract. So one of the things we can look at right off the bat, in a convenient sampling, 110 nurses from Taylor General Hospital completed an online survey assessing EM and NP, which is emotional management and nurse performance during COVID-19 climax levels in March and May of 2020. Only nurses who had direct contact with patients diagnosed with COVID-19 were eligible. Uh, Catherine managing emotional skill was used in a cross-sectional design to determine participants emotional management empirically nurse performance scale uh, was measured by the that doesn't make sense empirically nurse performance scale was measured by nurse performance scale okay and again I mentioned to you, you know, the idea that four, at least four people have reviewed that and nobody picked up that error right there because that is an error. First of all, NPS hasn't been abbreviated prior to this, so uh, you would look for an abbreviation for it. Oddly enough, it's abbreviated right after it. And the NSP or NPS was measured by nurse performance scale. What I think they'll probably want to say is the NP, so nurse performance, was measured by nurse performance scale. But that's not what they've said. But anyway, let's get past that. So I'm going to scroll down here. And this is all introduction and stuff by the looks of it. Let's see. Do they actually have so significance, aim of the study, methodology. So you can see they've got a specific methodology. And their research design. So this is actually the methodology. It's a cross-sectional descriptive design. So that descriptive research that we looked at is an example of one of the different methodologies. This is a specific type of descriptive research. So they actually do mention a methodology or design or plan or process or framework or outline, whatever term you want to use. Now, when you actually look at it, while well, they go sample, uh, sorry, setting and sample, and then they've got tools for data collection. So here's what they're actually using to collect data. So they've got a questionnaire, which is just a fancy way of saying survey. And then they've got a, another questionnaire. So they've got two questionnaires that they're going to use. And by the looks of it, that's it. So that's their methods of data collection are these two instruments. And then their method of data analysis. So you can see the scoring system here for each of the instruments. They talk about the validity, which is always a good thing. They talk about reliability, which is always a good thing. Now, I won't spend a lot of time sort of looking at what is in here exactly, but again, looking at it, you've got in what is ostensibly a, let's see, um, so there's not really anything on, just a little bit on the first page. So if you look at it, the actual article is, that's all tables. So the article finishes on page eight. So the actual written part of the article is about seven pages in length. And of those seven pages, there's a paragraph there, and then all this page, and then all of this column over here, and that little bit there. So about, what, two and three quarters, maybe, two and a half. And yeah, two and a two thirds, or sorry, one and two thirds, or one and a qu three quarters uh, of a page of seven pages. So you're looking at somewhere between 20 and 25 percent of what's written about this article. Um, you know, so a quarter to a fifth of the actual writing of this article is focused specifically upon the methodology. So that seems pretty detailed to me. Um, because they're using questionnaires and um, this one here is one that they've created themselves, and this one here was adapted, um, or adopted, sorry, from the Nurses' Grief Questionnaire. So by the looks of it, that when you see adopted or adapted, it tends to mean they didn't use it exactly as it was written. They changed it a bit. Um, normally, they'd say emotional scale um, was measured by the Nurse and Grief Questionnaire uh, established by Catherine in 2015. Uh, so in those cases, in an ideal world, I'd like to be able to come down here and see an appendix.
that actually had a list of the instruments so I could actually see what the questions are. Having said that, in all honesty, and see if there's neither one down here, based upon all of these, you can see they've got all of these statements here. Over here on the, I guess highlighting it doesn't help because it goes over there too, but all of this here on the left side, same thing here on the left side, around anxiety, you've got a bunch more here. So based upon that, you know, here's the statistics for nurse management of emotions. So I could probably recreate the survey based upon just looking at the details that they've provided here in the different figures. So, you know, that probably wouldn't be that difficult to figure out how to, you know, recreate what they've done. So that way I could replicate their work. So overall, not a bad job. A couple of little things to quibble about. But again, as I'm looking at this, that's one of the things that, um, you know, I'm looking at the level of detail. Is this enough that I could uh, often do it again. One of the things, and I don't see it here. Oh, yes, they do here. Um, yeah, so the reliability, they said, was 0.97. So that's a measure of quality uh, that they've got there. So when you're looking for um, measures of quality, you're looking for 0.95, or oftentimes it'll be written in the opposite, where it'd be 0. Point, sorry, 0 0.05. Um, you know, you're looking for an alpha, uh, that's actually what it's called, an alpha of 0 0.05 um, or a confidence level of 0.95 or higher. That refers to essentially the level of um, confidence or chance that exists in here. So in this case, basically that there's a 97% chance that the results of the questionnaire are accurate. There's a 3% chance that any results that are generated were due just completely to random dumb luck. Um, so you can say that, so all of the uh, things that they talk about here in the results, all of their findings, they can say that they're based upon their sample and the statistical procedure that they used, that they are about 97% confident that that's what was actually there. Um, so you're looking for some sort of confidence level or some alpha level um, to help guide you in terms of a quantitative uh, when you're looking at quantitative data analysis. Uh, so that's the second one that we're looking at and hopefully it gives you some sense as to again looking through to see how much is in here and uh, you know whether or not you feel that there's enough detail that you could do this study in your particular context.